In this video, we'll develop the solution for Laplace's equation in cylindrical coordinates, starting from the general expression. So here, our function u is a function of r, theta, and z, so the usual cylindrical coordinates. And this is expressed as follows. So this is the general form of the Laplacian in cylindrical coordinates. And we're going to approach this problem with the method of separation of variables, which says that we can assume that our solution has a form that uh, has an R dependence a theta dependence and a set dependence that are completely independent from one another. And as usual, the idea is to plug this trial solution in, divide by u on both sides to get a new system of ordinary differential equations, which uh, are easier to solve than the partial differential equation. So skipping over a few steps, this uh, procedure will result in the following equation. Okay, and here we have to be a bit more careful than we've been so far. We can't just blindly assign each one of these terms to a constant because for example, this term over here, which would normally only depend on one variable has a second variable over here, r squared. So we need to solve this uh, in steps. And we start out with uh, the term that is only a function of a single variable, which is this one over here. Okay, and that's because in order to say that a term is constant, it must be a function of a single variable and that variable can't appear anywhere else in the equation. So we can't yet say that this is a constant because R appears here. We can say this is a constant because R again appears here, but we can say that this term is a constant because that doesn't appear anywhere else and there's no other variable over here. So we're going to suppose that this term is equal to a constant that we'll call k sub n squared. The n is just for later convenience. It's going to serve as uh, an index that we're going to sum over. But just think of this as just a number. This then becomes a second order differential equation with constant coefficients, once again, which has a general solution which we'll write out like this. Okay, so E and F are constants that we would determine normally through boundary conditions or by the phys physical constraints of the problem. And you have uh, E to the minus KN Z and E to the KN Z over here.
Right, so we found one, one part of our solution so far. We found what Z is equal to. So now that we've set this to a constant, we're going to incorporate that in our equation. And then we need to get rid of this term over here, which is uh, the R variable that's uh, preventing us from taking this theta term to be a constant. So we're going to multiply through by R squared on both sides. So we end up with an R over here. The R square and the denominator in this term goes away. And we pick up an, an R square over here. Okay, so now that leaves us with this term over here that only depends on a single variable and that variable doesn't appear anywhere else in the equation. So now we can set that term equal to a constant. And we'll call that constant minus m squared. Again, the negative and the square come up out of convenience from already knowing what the solution should look like. Normally you would have to do this by trial and error. Um, this now becomes a um, second order ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients. And the reason for taking this is because this will give us a solution in terms of uh, trigonometric functions, which allow us to have the periodicity that's imposed on the angle. Just as we have for polar coordinates, the same periodicity needs to be satisfied for cylindrical coordinates. Okay, so. Just to write that out. This theta term must satisfy periodicity so the terms have to be uh, in terms of trigonometric functions. And again, the reason for that is if you have a problem on a cylinder like that, then if you're at a point over here and you go around it by a factor of two pi, you end up back in the same point. So you need to have the same value. And that's true at any height of the cylinder. If you're over here, and you go around the cylinder and you end up there, you need to have the same value. Similarly, as before, because of periodicity, for m is equal to zero, we just have that theta contributes a constant. And this is for the same reason as in the in the case of the polar coordinates. So you can review that if you if you're unsure why this is true. All right. So we found our theta component. We found our z component, and that leaves us with only the r component to figure out. So. We can set this to our constant and update our equation again. So 
So what we're left with is the following equation for R. There shouldn't be an R over here anymore. It's it's been brought up here now. All right, so let me rewrite this on a new page. Okay, so this is our differential equation for the R component of our trial solution. And this equation is of the, it's a very uh, famous type of equation known as the Bessel equation. And this has solutions which are known as the Bessel functions of first and second kind. And we denote this typically by J sub m, so m tells you the order of the Bessel function. So this is the first kind, Bessel function of the first kind and capital Y is the, sec the Bessel function of the second kind. And the way to think about these functions is that they are two cylindrical coordinates, what trigonometric functions are to polar coordinates. So they are the natural oscillatory solutions in a cylinder, just as the trigonometric functions are the natural oscillatory functions uh, on a circle. So this leaves us with a general solution for the radial component of our solution. That looks something like that. So with that, we found the three terms that make up our general solution. And in the next video, we'll look at some properties of the Bessel functions that we'll use in, uh, in solving our equation. Uh, just to put everything together first, we have as our general solution of Laplace's equation in cylindrical coordinates, we have our constant term from the uh, m is equal to zero data dependence. And then we have a sum over both of our indices. Uh, here, m starts at zero and n starts at one, and they both uh, they both have infinitely many terms. We have our uh, radial components. This is uh, being multiplied by our angular component.
and this is in turn multiplied by our uh, axial component, so in the z direction. They should have better subscripts. All right, so this is our the general form of our solution to Laplace's equation in cylindrical coordinates. And before we can put this to use, we need to figure out how we can work with uh, the Bessel functions, what they what they look like, and some important properties that will be of use to us.